Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over a brief explanation of radioactivity, also known as nuclear decay, nuclear radiation, radioactive decay, radioactivity. All those terms are kind of used interchangeably. Okay, before we get started, please don't forget, I appreciate it very much, bottom right-hand corner, there is that little red button there. Click subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a comment at the end of the video. What do you think of the video? Helpful, not helpful? Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. Okay, radioactivity. Let's come up with a nice, easy, simple definition. Radioactivity is when an unstable nucleus decays by losing energy. It does that through the admission. It loses that energy through the admission of radiation, which we call radiation, in the form of alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays, neutrinos, energy, positrons, all those kinds of things are the loss of energy. And why do unstable nuclei decay? By losing energy and emitting those particles because they're unstable and they want to become, just like everybody else in the world, stable. And they do that by losing energy through the emission of those particles. Okay, now, don't forget that radioactivity was first discovered in 1896 by Henri Becquerel. Now, I'm not quite sure how you say his name properly in French, but we just say Becquerel. He was a French guy. He was French. And for discovering radioactivity, he won the Nobel Prize along with Marie and Pierre Curie, which we'll talk about in a moment. 1903, he won the Nobel Prize for Physics. He also got the SI unit for radioactivity activity, for activity named after him, which is the Becquerel, abbreviated BQ. The one Becquerel is, well, Becquerel basically describes the number of decays, the number of radioactive decays that occur per second. And one Becquerel is, of course, one nuclear decay per second. And you can also write it like that. One Becquerel is equal to S to the minus one. S to the minus one means one over S. So that's the decays per second, kind of like frequency and hertz, which is cycles per second. This is decays per second, one Becquerel. Okay, now, how did he do this? Let's see if we can talk about it a little bit. Here is a nice picture of Becquerel. He's a very handsome guy. Here he is in his lab looking very dignified. Like, it's amazing to look at the lab equipment they had in those days. I mean, this was a long time ago, turn of the 1900s there, end of the 18th century. Okay, so he was studying phosphorescent materials. And because the Röntgen, Wilhelm Röntgen had just discovered in 1895 x-rays, and they're trying to figure out what x-rays were. So there were these things, these minerals, these materials that would phosphoresce, which basically means they would glow in the dark. It's that glow in the dark thing you see, that glow in the dark color. You expose something to light, you turn the light off, it glows in the dark. That's called phosphorescence. And they were trying to figure out what phosphorescence is, what x-rays were, what's all this energy that's being emitted. So what he did was he took a photographic plate. He covered it in black paper. He didn't put anything on it. He just took it outside and lay, let it outside and let it be exposed to the sun for a while, all day, a couple hours. And then he took the plate back inside. He de developed the plate and there was no exposure on the plate, no exposure, which means that that was kind of a standard. It was the black paper was blocking out all of the sunlight. So now he takes a piece of phosphorescent material, like for example, zinc sulfide phosphoresces. You expose it to light, you turn the lights off, it glows in the dark. He did that photographic plate Black, covered in black paper, phosphorescent material on the black paper, on the photographic plate, and it leaves it outside for a while. That phosphorescent material absorbs sunlight, re-emits that light in the form of this color or, or narrow band of wavelengths there, and he put that on the photographic plate, left it outside, come back in, develop the plate, and sure enough, he could see an outline of that material on the photographic paper when he developed that paper. So there was some exposure to the photographic plate. That means that there was some energy coming from that phosphorescent material that was actually going through the black paper. What was that energy? Maybe it was the x-rays they were thinking about. Maybe it was something else. So they were studying all these minerals, all these phosphorescent materials. And then he said, well, let's, let's study some that don't actually phosphoresce in the visible spectrum, like uranium. If you have uranium, you expose it light, you turn it off, it doesn't glow in the dark, so it's not phosphorescent, but maybe it gives off light or energy in the non-visible part of the spectrum, like maybe x-rays. So what he did was he took his photographic plate, covered in black paper, and he put a piece of uranium on it, a uranium salt. 
It wants to go outside, expose the sunlight, see if it'll absorb energy, emit energy that will then uh, show up on his photographic plate. But unfortunately, I think it was in Paris, there was no sun that day. So he takes his sample back inside with the photographic plate, with the black paper, with the uranium salt on it. He puts it in the drawer in his desk and goes home for the day or the weekend or for a while. And he comes back and he finds out he has that, that uranium on the, on the photographic plate wrapped in black paper in his desk. And he's like, well, I'm just going to develop this photographic plate and see what happens, see what, what it looks like. And when he did that, he was amazed to see that there was some exposure on the photographic paper. And he saw this image of the uranium that was on his photographic paper. It hadn't been outside. It hadn't been exposed. So he thought, okay, this isn't phosphorescence. So he did a bunch of other tests. And yes, he determined, he arrived at the correct explanation that the radiation was, was coming from the uranium itself. It was not phosphorescence. The uranium is not phosphorescent. There was no need for the uranium to be excited by some external source like the sun for it to give off radiation. Okay, that energy was coming right from the uranium, from right inside the uranium itself. And that is what we call radioactivity. It's kind of the spontaneous, the random emission of energy from the nucleus of an atom to become more stable. And he discovered your, uh, radioactivity in 1896, Henri Becquerel. And then the next element, in case you're wondering, was thorium. That was discovered to be radioactive. Now, of course, we have to talk about Marie and Pierre Curie because they also did a lot of work at this time with radioactivity, and they're probably, I would say, the most famous scientists studying radioactivity. Everybody knows Marie Curie because she discovered and he discovered polonium, which they named after Poland because she was from Poland. She was a French, a naturalized French citizen. She has a very complicated Polish name. I'm not going to try and say it. And then also in 1898, they discovered radium. So they discovered two more additional radioactive elements. And for doing that, along with Röntgen, uh, in not Röntgen, and along with um, Becquerel in 1903, they won the Nobel Prize in Physics. The three of them. Now, they, of course, they didn't want to give it to Marie, of course, because she's a woman and what, well, you know, all that kind of stuff. But Pierre said, no, give it to her also. He, he insisted, nice guy. So she got it, Pierre got it, and Becquerel. Now, she, she also won the Nobel Prize for chemistry in 1911. Now, that's amazing. She won two Nobel Prizes in two sciences, physics and chemistry. She was actually the first woman ever to win the Nobel Prize in 1898. That makes it even more amazing. And she was the first person to win two Nobel Prizes. Okay, there's another person, Linus Pauling. He won two Nobel Prizes. He won in chemistry, and there's nothing wrong with the Peace Prize, of course, but he won for the Nobel Peace Prize. Marie won in two hard sciences, physics and chemistry. That is just amazing. Okay. So they discovered two more elements, polonium and radium, and radioactivity was off and running. Okay, now they wanted to do some more tests and figure out what is radioactivity. So they took a radioactive sample, they put in a sample holder. The purple thing is supposed to be the radioactive sample. The blue thing is the sample holder. And they pointed that in the direction of a magnetic field. Now they were doing a bunch of stuff. What, how is it affected by cold? How is it affected by heat, temperature, whatever? But they want to know how it's affected by electric and magnetic fields. So they were going to so, so, uh, pass some radioactivity through a magnetic field. And when they did that, they found that some of the radiation was deflected by the radio by this magnetic field down or to the right and would be detected over here on the right. Some of it would be detect, deflected to the left and be detected, defle, detected up here on the left. And some would just go straight through and would not be deflected, not be affected by that magnetic field. So they got three different locations where they were picking up readings for that energy, that radiation that was coming out of that sample. Now, these particles that were deflected to the left, now this is, has to do with the magnetic field, charged particles, and the right-hand rule, which I'm not going to go over now, but they determined that these are positive particles, and they called those alpha particles. The ones that were deflected down here to the right, those were negatively charged in the opposite direction, opposite charge, beta particles, and some went straight through, no deflection, no charge, and we call those gamma rays, okay? So those are the three types of radioactivity, alpha, beta, and gamma. 
And that's how they separated those and determined that there were actually three different kinds of particles or energy. This is a particle, this is a particle, and this is just energy that's being emitted from that radioactive sample. Okay, now they also determined that, they, that those three types of radio had different penetrating powers, different amounts of energy. An alpha particle, which is the biggest particle, is basically a helium nucleus. It could be stopped by a piece of paper or like your skin. Okay, the beta particle, which is basically an electron, could go through paper, but would be stopped by aluminum. A sheet of aluminum could stop it. Gamma rays, gamma radiation is very high energy. It can go through paper, it can go through aluminum, and it can even go through lead, depending on the thickness of the lead. So they have different masses, different energies, and different penetrating powers, different the ability to penetrate different surfaces like that. Okay, so let's just go over, let's just talk about one thing. We're going to talk about this in the upcoming video. This is the decay chain for thorium. This is called the thorium decay chain. And you can see we start at thorium. And thorium will decay after 14 million years, the approximate age of the universe, uh, uh, by alpha decay. That's what this means. Alpha decay emits the alpha particle, becomes radion, radium, radium. Okay, and then um, then uh, it will that will go through beta minus decay, become actium. The beta minus again will become thorium again. It has a different same uh, mass, you know, same atomic number, different mass numbers. And then it goes through this chain, alpha decay, alpha decay, alpha decay, beta minus, until it ends up being a stable lead 208 element or nucleus. Okay, and we'll talk about in coming videos what is a little bit more about um, the types of radioactive decay and radioactive um, equations, decay equations. Okay, so there you go. That's a brief uh, introduction to radioactivity and explanation. I hope you find it very helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please leave me a comment. What did you think? Helpful? Not helpful? Thank you. And the thumbs up. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Show this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.